Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. It's Yvonne from Ginger Chick Rehab. I'm so glad to have you back today. And if you're visiting my channel for the first time, welcome. I do lots of DIYs, trash to treasure, furniture flips with my husband Chris, and thrifting adventures to fit into the farmhouse decor. So in today's video, we, I mean, I always show you my thrifting adventures, um, makeovers, you know, what I do to them to get re ready, them ready to resell in my booth. So sometimes the medium sized stuff kind of gets left behind and I just paint it up and put it in my booth, but we thought that it would be nice since we still round robin our medium sized items, I'm calling them, um, to sell in our retail booth. We do the same process. We get a whole bunch of them out, we fix whatever needs to be fixed on them, and then we get them painted up in the same manner that we do for um, our small items. So I thought it would be nice to put a little video together of some medium sized items. So just like the small items, the medium sized items are just as needy. There's a reason that you're thrifting them. They're usually broken, unwanted pieces. There's usually something a little bit wonky about them or something that needs some spackle. So, you know, I just, I feel blessed if a piece just needs painted. So this is just the process of how we get our medium items ready to retail. So here's the first shelf that we're gonna redo and I just absolutely love how sturdy this shelf is. I thought it would be a great place to display some of these collections. Though I love to find side tables in pairs, that doesn't happen very often. And as you see, this one had a, probably a super glue was on there um, that probably they didn't know how to remove. So we knew we were going to have to deal with it and we only found a single one of these. And I love when I come across these style of little side tables. This one was a little wonky, but that just needed some tightening up. And I have to say this is my first coat rack I've ever picked up, but at $4.99 I thought it would look super cute white. Though Chris can make these benches, but as you see, our workshop is very full, well, our garage. Until we can get our workshop, it was better off to buy this at Habitat. And I just can't pass up a side table when I see it. You know, you can use it as a bedside table or a side table. It had a little marks, but we knew spackling would fill those in. So now Chris is gonna clean them all with some crud cutter. Remember, prep is very important to get any residue or any oils off so the paint adheres to your item well. So since we're painting this, you can take a razor blade to remove and get that chunk of super glue off and then use some little bit of sandpaper to kind of smooth that down a little bit. And then he's gonna take a rotary sander over the whole top just so the paint takes evenly all the way through. And then after he cleans the top back off with some crud cutter, the little mark's a little too deep trying to get that um, super glue off there. I'm guessing that's what it was. So he's gonna end up having to spackle a couple spots that were, you don't wanna take it all the way down. You know, it's just easier to fill them in than to sand it all the way down. So to fix the wonkiness of this little side table, he's just gonna say, take some tight bond glue in the corners where they meet and then just um, take some clamps and let it sit overnight. And then for this coat rack, um, he's just gonna remove the hardware cause that'll get a fresh coat of black paint. So for this bench, all I did was need the screws retightened. And then on this little side table, he just needs to spackle in where it was just kind of beat up a little bit just to give that a nice smooth top finish. And for this um, little side table, he was take, removing the hardware and then the hardware off. There was hardware on the round table, even though it did not have a drawer, it had some decorative hardware. And then after cleaning it with some crud cutter, he is using our Rust-Oleum Flat Black that's usually what we always paint our hardware with and just giving it a few coats to freshen it up. So now it's on to hand sand wherever he had put some spackle um, just to blend that all in nice and smooth. So kind of like my small items, these medium size items, as I'm referring them, they all needed something a little different. Some of them are dark enough that they can just get the flat white kills paint and primer for their first coat or like this bench that needed to be undercoated with the black because it's a lighter paint. Sometimes on these more older vintage pieces, the stain, I guess, or the shellac that they use, uh, 
polyurethane, what have you, will yellow through the white paint. So then we actually use a shellac, which is a clear coat, and then that um, stops it from bleeding through the next coat of white paint. So of course our final process of this was to, that they all got painted white and they all got our distressed. And if you're new to my channel, I can link some other videos where we show how that we paint and distress the pieces. Um, we usually always hand sand and then run sandpaper over the entire piece to make it nice and smooth. So now since this bench is pretty long, I thought it could use some of my grain sack striping. I know those of you who have watched my channel are like, oh really, she's going to do some grain sack, but yep, I am. Um, <laughs> we just thought that it was such a big bench that just kind of, you know, made it stick out a little bit more. So especially since I resell. So here I am just measuring, trying to find center, um, which is nice because it was almost a 12 inch um, wide bench. So my ruler worked perfectly. So for this stripe, I'm using my large tape. It's a two inch tape that I get at the Dollar General. I was comparing it to regular masking tape there for you. So I am just taking the masking tape and I really like using masking tape. You can use painter's tape, but the thing is like, so I can see where I put that little pencil mark. So I can really tell where my center is. And when you use painter's tape, you no longer see that little mark. So I really do like using masking tape for, that's one of the reasons anyway. So actually for this project, I am using three different sizes of tape. So I have my two inch, and then I'm gonna be laying a little, um, I think it's a half inch, I've never really measured it, but it's a smaller uh, masking tape that we had gotten at an auction. And um, we got a whole bunch of it actually, so I try to use it. And so I'm laying that to be where the space is that is not um, painted in between this large stripe. So if you're new to this process, what you want to do with that second piece of tape that you're laying down is just butt it right up against that first tape nice and tight because that center piece is where you're going to be applying the paint and you're going to be removing it. So this is why it's so big of a deal to get that first piece of tape nice and centered. So then you're going to do the same thing on the other side and then make sure that it's good and secure and then remove that center tape. That's where your paint is going to go. So now since I used that small tape, I'm going to lay a piece of masking tape. I'm just going to kind of eyeball, you know, what I want the spacing to be because I'm going to end up doing all three of my site stripes at the same time. So you can see the difference here between that half inch and what probably an inch of the masking tape is. Three quarters maybe. I'm I really didn't measure, I'm sorry. I guess you can if you want. But, um, so now I'm just gonna be laying another piece of tape on either side and I'm just gonna eyeball um, the spacing I want for my next stripe. And since my tape wasn't quite long enough, I'm to have to add on a little piece to all the way to the end. And I want mine to go all the way on the side so I'm rounding it over to the bottom. So then I'll lay the same size masking tape onto the other side um, and then I will take a ruler. Since I'm eyeballing, I still do want it to completely match in case my eyeball is deceiving me. So I'm just going to take a ruler to make sure that they measure the same all the way down. So then I really like to press on the masking tape to try to get it to be good and secure so that the paint doesn't go over underneath the tape. So now I'm just using the Apple Barrow Multi-Use in Black. For my stencil color and then I just apply it with a makeup sponge that I get from the Dollar Tree and just kind of do you know where you do that where there's not a lot of paint on the sponge you know the dry dapping so you don't want to help have a whole bunch that's you know the reason it runs under the tape also I don't know about you all but my favorite part is that reveal part where you get to take your stencil or your tape off and see how you did well, also it's a little scary hoping they don't have any bleed under. So, you know, I like to distress. We always pre-sand the white part anyway, but so when you take that tape off, there's a raised edge from where you had put the tape on and the two layers of paint, because I always do a couple layers just to make sure that it completely covers. And so one of the reasons that one, I like to distress and two, I like to smooth down that rough edge. 
So for that little shelf, I just thought I needed a, a, a little stencil on it. So in my Silhouette Cameo 3 and the design that I have bought, there's this collectible antique flea markets. I'm going to take the flea market off and just use the collectible in antique. So I'm going through the process of showing you how I ungroup it um, to be able to take that flea market off. So I have to click on it and then release it. Um, that way it's not all grouped together. And then I have to go back in and ungroup it um, so I can um, highlight the part and delete the part that I do not want. And then on the bottom little swirlies, I'm gonna group that all together so that I can bring that up and then regroup the entire piece so I can size it to what I need for my stencil on the shelf. So as I'm still learning this machine, so every time I use it, I just try to share in my videos little by little what I am learning. So here I'm just taking measurements of how big, how wide, and how high that I can have my stencil be. And then sometimes I notice when I create a stencil like this, just because I can have it a certain size, doesn't mean that the letters actually look uh, pleasing. So even though it says I could have done a 12, inch to fit on there the way that this um, stencil was made it kind of stretched and made the letters look wonky so I did make it a smaller size so I know that this stencil is upside down for the video but it's the angle that I can uh, paint in front of you on or the shelf would be in the way so I'm just using the same paint that I used for my grain sacking the black apple barrel multi-use paint in the same technique where I just take that sponge makeup sponge from the Dollar Tree and just do the dabbing technique a little bit of paint on it and just kind of do light bouncing and I do a couple coats so I do use permanent vinyl when I do my stencil I find that it has the tightest um, adhere adhering however you would like to say that the removable sometimes less a lot of bleed under so to prevent it from pulling off the previous paint, the white paint that we'd already painted, I use a blow dryer to heat up that vinyl so it does not rip off my paint. I've done way too many projects where I, until I learned this little technique of heating up that vinyl that I ruined the whole project and had to sand it off and start from scratch. And then I just like to use a little pin, like a boutonniere pin, um, to do my weeding you know like when you take the letters out of the vinyl when it's first cut and I do the same thing when I'm removing all the little insets of the letters it just it's a smaller little um, dot I guess you'd say and it's sharper so it really grabs that piece of vinyl for me and then I go through with a uh, I always have like this older piece of 220 that I've used on a piece of furniture already that's just you know, it's not ready to throw away, but just enough that it would sand this bl this really blackness and kind of distress the lettering for me. So the final step to finish up these projects is to use some Verithane finishing wax. That just one helps seal the paint and helps seals, you know, just protects that paint, especially since it's white. And since the paint that I use, you don't necessarily have, you don't have to use the wax. We just choose to because I like to protect the white paint that we paint. And I like the, the nice smooth silky feeling that it leaves our items that we redo. So on the coat rack, I just thought that bottom was, you know, you know this is a homemade piece, but I just wanted a little something something on the bottom. So. I'm just going to take this larger jute twine that I got at Walmart and I'm just going to do, a, you know, wrap it around the bottom just using some hot glue just, just so your eye doesn't take you to those screw holes that you really couldn't do much about and just, uh, I just feel like it was going to bring it up just a notch. So which one of our medium flips was your favorite? Did you like this bench? Would you have just left it white or did, do you like the green sack striping on it? And I just love these little simple side tables. I'm so happy when I come across one when I'm out thrifting. Just all that added detail, just distress is so nice. And I wish I could have found two of these side tables. I love how this distress and I like that little hardware, even though there's not a drawer in it. You know, like I said, two are hard to find. Um, so while well, sometimes you just take what you can get and I just love how this little round table turned out. 
So I think this is just one of those pieces that you could use in a bedroom or you could use in your, your family room or your living room. Just a nice side table, so versatile. And I just love, absolutely love how those sharp edges, even though there's not a ton of detail, it, those sharp edges just distress so nice. And I do, you know, I don't know what you envision for this little shelf, but I think this little shelf, the sturdy as it is, just would hold somebody's collection. And I thought I would just use my little creamers that I collect and my little white salt and pepper shakers. And I'm like, oh no, I wish I had a place for it because I might keep it for myself. And I'm glad I didn't pass up this simple coat rack. I love how the, the white makes it pop and the older wood just distressed so nice and how the black hardware I mean I just like all about it and I do like that I added the jute at the bottom just to distract for that um, bottom that was kind of a little bit more homemade than I would have liked but I do think it's a nice piece so I thank you so much for watching today's video and what did you think what was your favorite item that we redid did you like the side tables did you like the little bench you know, I just, I know that my husband can make benches, but this right now, our house is just packed full of stuff until they can get the workshop done, especially with being closed down. And, you know, I know you've watched my channel thought, oh yeah, she did green sack, but you know, it just takes it up a notch and just makes it stick out. So, I mean, it's just green sack striping on a paint job and you can always paint over it, but I just really like that detail of the green sack striping. So. Again, thank you so much for watching today's video and thank you for being part of my YouTube family. And if you'd like to be part of my YouTube family, just hit that subscribe button. Thank you so much.